Hello and good evening to episode 6 of the We've Got Vino show. Uh, this is going live on Twitch. Um, I haven't done the restream thing to, onto YouTube or anything yet or onto Twitter, which is something I'm going to get sorted out for next week. Um, but yeah, we are live on Twitch. Um, this is going to follow up onto iTunes, SoundCloud and onto, onto YouTube later on this evening. Um, I've done something slightly different this week. I've not taken someone from the Pez community and we're going to talk about... Um, Pez stuff. Um, I brought one of my friends that I've known for quite a while instead. Um, he's very knowledgeable in a lot of things, so I think for a lot of people, I think there's only one person actually that even knows who he is, and that's because he played Metal Gear Solid. Um, but he goes by the name of Mogul, so that is exactly what we're going to call him for throughout the rest of this. And Rastaman, thank you very much for, for joining in here. Um, but yeah, do you want to introduce yourself there, mate? I think you've just done a bang up job about, about introducing me anyway. <laughs> no, that's good. No, that's yeah. needed. Oh, God. Even Kerry's joined in now as well. She said she would. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, I've chosen someone slightly different. Usually, um, most of the guests have been from the PEZ community, and obviously, we end up getting into an hour's worth of debate about PEZ. But moving away from that rather than just uh, talking about those things. Um, Selch, welcome, welcome as well, mate. Um, I've got various other things. Now, is. Um, Predominantly, what 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 is the dominant game that you play more than if it's League of Legends? Isn't it? Uh, primarily, yeah. Uh, but that's mainly with other people. I play on my own. I tend to go on the PlayStation and then um, whatever is relevant at the time. So I bought Metal Gear Solid Survive recently, and then before that was Assassin's Creed. Mm. Yeah. So it, obviously, you you play well. We play FIFA as well, don't we? But Predominantly, yeah. it's it's just one of the things to just wait for other people to come on, and then we jump on together. It's not something that we take the time out to just play on our own. I I, I don't anyway. I know Mike does. Mike plays all the time. It's career mode. He absolutely loves it. But that's um yeah. I, yeah, I only play FIFA with other people. I tend not to play it alone anymore. Yeah, you see that I use Pez for everything else, barring online. I do play my club and that obviously, but we won't get into Pez because it will just bore the fucking <laughs> ass out for everybody here. Apart from the people who are here for pairs, but uh, yeah, we've also got the, the the normal structures. We've got our news stories. We've got the FF for, uh, for your information segment. What have you been playing? And then uh, I can't remember what your main topic is because I told you to go away and reevaluate it because it was very um, what's the word that we was using? Vague. Yeah. I, I don't know whether or not you've uh, decided on what it is. So obviously, I'll give you. A, I will just wing it. We'll just wing it. <laughs> Fine. So yeah, the, go a normal run is we'll start off with the news stories, which I'm just going to bring up uh, the news story screen. So the first one, I actually, it's the first time I've ever done this. I've actually let the guest help me pick the stories, which you actually did a bang up job in that in doing. To be fair, so that's something that I might do um, going forward as well. Uh, but the first news story that we're going to run with is uh, major game companies are teaming up to combat tox. Oh, I can never pronounce this right. Toxic toxicity in gaming. Yeah. That's right, isn't it? I should know that really because it's a fucking system of a down song, isn't it? Uh, but the Fair Play Alliance joins more than thirty companies, including Blizzard, Riot, Twitch, uh, to make an <laughs> online gaming a nicer experience. Now, off the basis of this story, it's never going to happen, is it? Well, the as gaming becomes more popular, bigger ad companies get involved. So you've seen it happen with YouTube where uh, PewDiePie did the Nazi joke and then all the ad companies gone, hey, what are you doing here? And pulled loads of ads so you, YouTube had to step the game up in what they was doing. So I think gaming companies are taking that line. Um, obviously, you've got the eSports community millions of pounds in prize money so they don't want to lose any ads mm -hmm. by people going oh we died of cancer during <laughs> games so but but you've seen it on youtube where it just doesn't work but the thing is if you give if you're giving the opportunity for someone to play online and play for whether or not it's fifa or pez where you're playing for three points online or you're playing for fortnite to try and get that number one or player with no background whatever you're trying to get that chicken dinner People are always going to find a way to be a dickhead, with regard to yeah. whether or not it's going to send you a nasty message or just completely fuck up the experience for the other person. It doesn't matter how it does. A game in itself online, you don't, I mean, offline, when you're sat next to your mate on the couch, you can do whatever you want. You can dig them in the arm so they can't use the left arm and move around the pitch or something like that. Do you know what I mean? But that's in the house as long as, as soon as you go online, it's just for anybody to glitch it, to mod it, to could just completely destroy the experience that you're trying to create there's no way that anybody 
can put well, anything uh, like this. cheating is is easy enough to to go against. You can spot algorithms and people who've mm. got macros and mods in. They're easily found out these days. But it's toxic. Toxicity is very vague. Yeah, and that's what I mean. It, 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 I mean, you can be toxic in your gameplay by yeah. just running into the opposition and giving them easy kills, or you can start being offensive to someone. In the chat box. Uh, yeah, and if you're being offensive to someone, all you have to do is mute them. Mm. That shouldn't be... Some people like to be have people toxic against them because mm. it gives them an opportunity to retaliate. Yeah. So moving on to the rest of the story, then it says no secret that in online games like Overwatch, League of Legends, which obviously you have played, we we only played it. Did you play Overwatch at any other point, barring the one we played at our arcade club? I gave it a go when it was free to play for a weekend uh, on the PlayStation. It was like yeah, uh, another uh, what was it? Been out for a year, so they let right. people try it for free. But that was about it. Right. So, uh, Overwatch, League of Legends, and many others uh, suffer from toxic communities. Uh, from raging over suboptimal team compos- uh, compositions, underperforming teammates, to slinging insults, st- uh, steep in it, steeped in racism, sexism, and homophobia. It's a problem that has played pre- gaming pretty much as long as we've been connecting our computers to play against it, people online. So, it, the, the, they're not like. Say it. they're not they're not go, going down the route of someone cheating. They're literally just saying be nice to someone online. Yeah, which is if you've ever played an online game, they will say something to offend you, even if they don't mean it. Yeah. Like the internet isn't full of racist, homophobic people. It's just full of trolls. Yeah, and if they find out you're black or gay or your mum happens to say something when you're on. The microphone, they'll whip into yeah, you. Of course, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's anything to just try and get under your skin to the try edge, and trigger you. Yeah, either because they think it's funny or they think it will give them an edge. Yeah. So, uh, as I read the article, and it doesn't go on about anything about how people they're going to stop people from cheating, which should be the ultimate. Yeah, you. Know, it should be stop cheating, then stop. Have you ever played League of Legends or stuff like that? It's feeding where people just run straight into mm. the enemy because they've given up yeah. and they want the yeah. game to be over quicker. They should be the first two to the tackle and then just let the person deal with chat themselves. Yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, you, the, you turn off your microphone or you close the chat box or something like that. That's the easy way around. Yeah, you either got a, a mute text or a mute mic button. Mm. There's, people just need to grow up. Yeah, yeah they can't just like log off and start crying about it. Yeah. Uh, Kerry's saying so I've been playing a bit of Sea of Thieves they've got a feature to allow crew to stick to a crew member in, uh, in uh, she's corrected herself crew member in the brig if they're detrimental to the team and you can scuttle your ship which basically respawns you elsewhere if another crew is giving you a negative experience well, that's alright I, I haven't. have you seen the Sea of Thieves I haven't seen anything I've, I've it. seen it looks a bit cartoony I saw an article before saying it's uh, early release in disguise and it was uh, 50 quid last time I had a look at yeah, buying it. On the play- I'm sure Kerry oh. said it was saying something about it having no end game as well. Yeah, that's why people are saying it's early release in disguise. I mean, it being 50 quid as well. Probably, it's probably going to fall on its ass pretty quickly. Yeah, there's no way that I'd be paying that. No chance. Ed, what's going on? Oh, Zizu as well. My uh, A big shout out to Zizu as well. He's my very first subscriber onto this channel, um, which I do appreciate very much. Um, so yeah, that was obviously the uh, the major gaming companies team that's about toxicity. It's never going to happen. I think it's just a pipe dream. Uh, no, I, I think if they ever implement it, they'll be hap- they'll be heavy handed with it. Yeah, and just piss off the gaming community. Yeah, of course. Well, what, and if there's one what's community, the, what's the you don't. What they're going to do? Well, what they're going to yeah. just, just ban your ban your account for playing that game. So you should just go and make another one and do exactly the same. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's just a lot of well, shit. the more people they ban, the more. Money will lose, yeah, exactly, so it, it weigh, it'll, yeah, it'll weigh up. Do they ban people to keep the ad revenue, or do they keep the people paying to keep the ad revenue? Depends what works yeah. out better for them in the long run. Yeah, so uh, Ed and Zizu, it was about major cry, uh, major game companies are teaming up to battle toxicity in gaming in general. So people just giving it the big gun. Um, over the microphone and then getting pissed off and crying away. Um, so they've gone to uh, these uh, gaming companies are trying to figure out a way on how to stop that from happening, which will never happen. 
Uh, so that was the that was the first uh, news source. The second one uh, is, is probably something that I've talked about it's just below Pez in the amount of times that I spent talking about it. But Fortnite mobile players have spent 1.5 million in just three days. Well, this article is about six or seven days old now, so you could probably probably round up to about two mil now, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, Fortnite players have already spent a lot of money on the iOS version of the game. App data tracker sensor tower, a sensor tower calculates that Fortnite Mobile has made in excess of 1.5 million in less than a week. Uh, that's a huge amount of money to make in any time frame, let alone in just 72 hours. But it doesn't tell the whole story. It's worth remembering that Fortnite Mobile is currently is only available on iOS with Android support set to follow in some time. I'm sure it's out on mobile on uh, Android. Uh, it's a week old. It might be already. Yeah, I'm fairly I, I haven't seen any adverts for it. I've been seeing a load of adverts for PUBG Mobile, but yeah. not for Fortnite. Yeah. But I'm, I'm the last week's guest who I had on uh, contextual. I, in fact, what he said was he ended up logging into, um, like you know, you can change the VPN on your phone or whatever, so you can go onto somebody else's market, like you can on the PSN. Yeah. He said he did it from like a, a Chinese one or something like that. So he said he has definitely been playing it. His Android, he's been playing Player Unknown as well. But Jesus Christ, one point five magic! What's going on, mate? Uh, yeah, one point five mil in just three days. It's a ridiculous amount of money. That's again, it's something that I did talk about last week. It makes me wonder why these games aren't on a Switch yet. Because the amount of money that they'd be raking in from people like we've got Wi-Fi in work, I can take my Switch into work and play it on my dinner. Do you know what I mean? And if I was the sort yeah. of person that wants to use microtransactions, I could throw a bunch of money into it. Do you know what I mean? It's just that that is the ultimate experience. People don't. I don't like playing mobile games. At all, really, unless it's like a, a free kit game where I can swipe it or something like that. I like to have a tactile controller in my hand. Yeah, so I play uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes on my phone, and it's just like old school Final Fantasy where you just pick your move and wait for them to go. Yeah. I wouldn't want to play a live game yeah. on my mobile. It's something that requires some sort of. Um, like you have your crosshair and sensitivity settings and stuff like that. I mean, I've got massive hands, so my phone yeah. in my hands is probably just about big enough, I'd say, my phone to be able to play something like that on it. However, I don't think I'd, I, I, it wouldn't be a joyful experience playing a game like that on there. I mean, I've tried to play emulators on my phone, and it just, I'll, I'll be at the run really well, like Game Boy ones and stuff like that, which I'd be surprised if they didn't run it well on my phone. But just having a game like that on here, it'd just be a bag of shite. I just couldn't stick with it. Yeah, I've tried a few old SNES emulators as well, and it's just... Yeah, because it, you know, I like that feeling, I like that sensation under my fingers of the, the D-pad moving and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the... Ed saying, I think Fortnite and Switch would be crazy, just imagine console crossover, Jesus Christ, yeah, but it'll never cross over with the PS4. Not Nothing, and I don't think it, I don't think it, Sony will ever want to play ball and crossover. They've had the opportunity with Rocket League. They've had, in fact, the amount of games that they brought out for PlayStation uh, that they could have cross-played is ridiculous. Well, Fortnite has actually switched it on accidentally once. Yeah. <laughs> quite, uh, well, it was a couple of months ago, weren't it? That's clearly yeah, how easy it is. Just to switch, and it just everyone started yeah, crossing. I'm up. sure that I'm sure when Rocket League first came out, they were saying exactly the same thing because they brought it out on PC as well, and now it's out on. Um, I'm fairly certain as well. If you could play on Switch, you can play people that are on PC. So it's just like one big crossover platform. I, understand, I don't understand why they, they won't do it. It's the amount of money that they'd make from the friends. So say, for instance, um, I don't know, um, I know Zizu and he's got an Xbox, so I could be playing with him. Do you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, Roberto Baggio Free Kick was the best game to play at work. What a game that was. that was. Did you ever play that one? No, I didn't. Is that a mobile one? No, no, it's like a flash game. So it has like three It has three boxes. So you'll have one that's got swerve, one that's got power, and one that's got height. So you have to get them where you think. Because you have like a wall in front of you, and then you have your keeper in between the sticks. So then you've got to try and get them where you think you got to. Um, so the swerve you can do outside of the boot, inside of the boot, or it's it straight. And then you've got to think where the keeper's going to go. But every now and again, you might get someone taking you out, um, and you might get a penalty and stuff like that. It was, oh, mate, it was awesome. Play it after this. It's just proper old school. Uh, PS4 don't need to do console crossover, but you could you imagine that they do need to at some point. If there's that many consoles that are coming forward that are doing it, then they're going to be the ones that are left behind. I think Xbox now. Are starting to build back their customer base with um, the backwards compatibility uh, that they're doing and this Xbox Live Pass or whatever it is that they're bringing out, which is like a Netflix style. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good way to go. Yeah, I mean, I we've mean, got it now with PlayStation now, aren't we? 
but it's shit. Yeah, and it's overpriced. Yeah, it's all old school games as well. It's nothing newish. Yeah. So it's stuff it's like that. Are... It's, it's just bringing your customer base back in again, isn't it? So. Yeah. I mean, I had a look at it. They've got PlayStation Three games that I really want to play, but they won't release them on the store because they want people to subscribe. Like I never played the original Red Dead Redemption, and they've got it on PlayStation now, but you can't buy it on its own. Yeah. You have to go through the uh, the subscription to get it. Which is fifteen sheets a month. <sighs> is it a five as a tenner? No, more than that, mate. I I oh. did it originally. I did the fourteen day free trial, and I was playing. What was I playing? Proper got into it. Oh, I don't know what it was? It it wasn't even that good of a game, but I was proper into it. <laughs> um, I can't remember what it was. If I logged onto my PlayStation now, it'll still be on the dashboard. Um, but I was playing that for ages, and then the 14 day went off, and I thought, fuck this, I want to finish it. So I bought it, and then I never finished it. But I started playing like um, Resident Evil, Dead Dark Side Chronicles or something, because I only had a, play- I had a PlayStation 3, but I didn't have it for long. So there's loads of games yeah. that I didn't end up playing, but a lot of them on there. But yeah, the thing is as well about the Xbox, when you download them as well, don't you? So if your internet's down, you can still play them offline, whereas on PlayStation now it's constantly streaming. Yeah. Which is annoying. Well, anyone who doesn't have unlimited... If they like. In that, yeah. But the, yeah. the thing is with PlayStation now, the only flip side of that is because it's always online. Um, you can play it on your PC or you can play it on your Vita. The PS3 games. It doesn't have to just be on your PS4. Yeah. Uh, Shogun, what's going on, mate? How are you doing? All right. Uh, just bought a racing wheel which would normally cost 300 quid. Got it for 170. Jesus Christ! Did you get the bo- Did you get the the seat with it as well? I spent a fucking car for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could, you could buy it for your punto for that. Yeah. Start ragging it around there. Uh, PlayStation turned down EA Access. PS4 and the uh, Xbox 360 years ago. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I don't, I don't know if you've got the chat up or anything because I'm just skimming through it. No, so I'm not on see. Twitch. Yeah. Uh, PS Now is the biggest rip-off ever. It's good value except when it's first launch. I traded in Dragon Age Inquisition, which I paid for EA Access itself. I've got... I've got actually downloaded that. It was on sale for like four quid around Christmas, so I ended up getting that. So I need to finish that. Um, yeah, I bet you didn't play it, have you? What Dragon Age? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did it. I only did. <laughs> well, to be fair, like the first two hours is basically like the prologue anyway, isn't it? So well, the first fifteen hours of fucking prologue on that exactly, game. Exactly. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I've kind of played it. I think I've just basically switched on and made my character. But <laughs> yeah, that's like a good two hours in the game. <laughs> Well, that, that, in fact, that was a, that was one of your original um, topics, wasn't it? Which I'll come back to in a bit. Uh, third newsletter, news story, shall we say? Ark Survival Evolved is coming to the Nintendo Switch now. Disclaimer: yeah, This one of yours. <laughs> you are. This one of your stories. Yes, it is because I wanted this game when it came out on PC. Never bought it, and as soon as it came out for PlayStation, still never bought it. So this is. This is where I'm coming in now because it's coming for the um, Nintendo Switch. So I'm going to read it. We're going. Uh, Ark Survival Evolved is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Studio Wildcard announced during Epic Games at the State of Unreal keynote today that Game Developers Conference GDC 2018. The prehistoric survival game will be released digitally at retail for Nintendo console this fall. The Switch version is being co developed by Abstraction Games and will feature all the content found in the original release, including over 100 different creatures. Studio Wildcard announced that the first wave of closed beta invites to War Drum Studio recently announced a mobile version of Ark Survival Evolved. Please do not tell me that is the port that I'm getting onto the Switch. Uh, I've been sent out to iOS users. The mobile version will provide a full online experience and will release for iOS and Android free to play title. Uh, I really hope this isn't a thing of things to come with mobile games for everything. Oh, God. Do you know what, right? I- I've read. <laughs> this is how uh, this is how excited I was about it. I haven't read the full art. This is the first time that I've read the full article. When I put this into the sheet, I only read the title and the first two paragraphs. And as I scroll <laughs> down to read it, then my disappointment level went from one to about fourteen out of ten. If I swear to God, if we get the mobile port of this game on the Nintendo Switch, which to be fair, on Steam. I think it's still in early access, and I still think on the PlayStation it's in early access as well. I think it's a very similar situation to what it was like on Seven Days to Die. I swear to fuck, I will not be buying this game. I, it was one of the ones that I was, I'd be more than willing to put a pre-order down and get this game. Oh, I'm not going to be starting on pre-orders. No, so I did a whole <laughs> thing about it. 
But no, it's, it's definitely one of those games that I was super excited for and I've just completely disappointed myself by not reading the full article and that is probably a lesson to everybody and re read the fucking thing first. Um, but yeah, it just can't be... It's one of them games you can't be a mobile version of it. It's too big of a game. I know they've done it with Minecraft. I'm not a Minecraft fan. Uh, I've never played... I've, I've played it once with my brother while well, he was showing me what to do and it was just fucking shite. It's not my kind of game at all, um, and I don't know how they've managed to put it on mobile. It could be that the stuff on there that I have absolutely no idea is in the main game, but not in the mobile version. But I hope to God that this isn't a mobile version of the game that's coming to it. It'd just be a pain in the it, ass. It, it just opens up a big market for people who aren't actually. I'm going to offend some people, but if you're playing your mobile, you're not a real game, right? No, you fuck. But it opens up the market to pretty, everyone's got a mobile. Exactly, that's not the everyone's why got it, a it? PlayStation. That is the reason why yeah. I do it. Uh, let's have a look at the chat. What are people saying? Arc Evolved on Switch will just be as laggy and glitchy as the Ark Survival on PC, Xbox, and PS4. I'm fa I think Ed's actually played this as well, so that'll be nice. Um, if, it, if it's early access, that's probably the biggest con of the last five years, isn't it? Well, every game's been in early access yeah. on Steam. I mean, I've been dubbed, I've been duped so many times by it, so like DayZ. That's one of them. Seven Days to Die, that was definitely one of them. Which, to be fair, since I played this afternoon um, with Show, that's in the chat, it was a hundred times better than when I first played that game. Like He showed me this like mod launcher and stuff, so it adds a lot more to the game than what the, is currently in the vanilla version, but fucking hell. So yeah, everything's either early access or you get a day one patch for it. Yeah. Well, oh, my I mean, God. Even Tony that, Ark's. So... Oh, my God. Do not get me started on Tony Ark's 5. <laughs> Did you hear about that one? No, it I didn't know. Oh, fuck me. Right, so, obviously, Tony Hawk's 5 was about to land. Everyone was absolutely buzzing about it. They, again, it was one of them pre-orders through the roof. Um, it didn't get started. So everybody was reporting on it, saying, oh, it looks amazing. Um, it's gone back to its roots. It's got uh, all the old-school stuff. That you can do. You can pick up skate and whatever else <clears throat> came out. Guess how much of the game was on the disc? How much? The the demo, the tutorial. <laughs> and the rest was just the a patch. The rest was a patch. It was a 7 gig patch that landed on the first day, which obviously threw it all out the window for anybody who was, um, who was not connected to the internet, so they couldn't play it. They could just basically do the tutorial. Um, <laughs> but after that, it's just like everyone was playing it, thinking, this is, including myself, I didn't buy it on release day. I got it like a week after, stupidly still. I figured, oh, fucking hell, it can't be that bad. Played it, it was shite. But then luckily, while well, I still had it, they patched it. Because there was like this triangle button was like um, grind and slam. So if you jumped up in the air and you went to grind, it slammed down on the floor first before you grind. Which most, nine times out of ten, would make you bail and fall off. So if you was doing a combo breaker, you just it just didn't work. It was just so shit. Um, but yeah, that was that was my... Beautiful story so no, about Tony Hawk. No, no old school Tony Hawk no, 2 then. No, 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 no. In fact, I, yeah. I, because I've, I told you about my PS2 thing, I actually bought, where is it? Tony Hawk's uh, Underground 2, because it had the jackass. Is that the one with Goldfinger on it? No, that was the, that was the original one. That. Original. that was the original one. I did, they did actually bring a remastered version of that out on the Xbox 360 arcade, and they had it on Steam as well, but because the copyright um, of the songs that was on the disc... Had run out. They had to get rid of it off the store. They were the best part about the exactly. Game. But because they didn't hold the rights anymore, I think they had the rights for like fifteen years. So if you've got the disc, you're fine. But any digital version now, they just take off the store. <sighs> Shit. Oh yeah. Uh, the chat is just going wild at the moment. Uh, Ark is like Minecraft, but re realistic uh, graphs and dinosaurs. Uh... I just want to say realistic. I just watched a video when he was shooting a fucking rocket launcher at a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Man and Dinosaur didn't coexist, what are you on about? Yeah. Uh, however, they've announced that you can finish Far Cry in 10 minutes. There's a, there's a few games with bugs on like that. Mm. Oh, not, you yeah, are you getting Far Cry next week? I don't know, yeah. There's a few games coming out. Oh, it's one of them. And I, I don't know if Far Cry is going to be <laughs> different enough than the last couple of them. Well, Because the Far Cry 3 was what a... The best Three games I've played. Three was unreal. I loved four. That's because yeah. me and Cropper, though, we ended up finishing four together. It's just yeah. All the court missions that was on it just made the game for me. But four, to me, wasn't big enough difference. They tried to just copy three. Mm. And then they fucking ruined it with Far Cry Primal. Oh, do you know what, mate? I played that for the first three hours. 
of that game. And I didn't get the same feeling playing it as I did with the rest of them. Like I've got two and three behind me on my 360, and I've got four. <clears throat> I've got four digitally downloaded on me on my PlayStation. Four, um, but they, well, they the, the, um, it's a similar reason why I stopped playing the Assassin's Creed series as well. So I, I play in the new Assassin's Creed now, but I stopped playing it after the first couple because it's basically. The same game every year. You, you like the new one though, don't you? Yeah, I like the new one, but the um, the older ones they were yeah. just it just reskins the different this... eras, wasn't it? Yeah, it's basically FIFA. Yeah, <laughs> you just get a new character every year, yeah. and everything else is run to this place and uncover a bit more of the map, and then do a few more missions. Mm. Well, that's exactly, yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? It's like you climb up to the tallest tower, you want you do the tower, and then the rest of the map opens. Yeah. Uh, Magic saying early access play uh, paid to alpha test. It was a bag of shite. <laughs> Fucking, uh, hands up if you bought No Man's Sky like an idiot. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> you were still trying to convince me it was decent about two weeks later. Uh, I've, uh, I gave it another go a couple of weeks ago. They added to to fair to them. They have added a shitload to it. Still boring though. We uh, it's better, and they didn't have to do it. So fair play to them. Mm. Oh yeah, because they, like, they, they, uh, they came out, didn't they? Like half the people that works there get made redundant. Uh, I think the main guy didn't he like leave? Yeah, uh, he got absolutely battered, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, it went from forty five pound in the first week to, to three weeks into release. It went down to twenty five quid. That's like most games nowadays. But that was like a skyrocket. That I mean, only because yeah, it got it's most so long. people. Most people requested refunds mm. and got them as well, which is pretty rare. Well, if you do it through Steam, you get an hour, don't you? Get an hour to play it. Which I, with a game like that, an hour isn't really a dent, is it? No. Uh, why would you? Uh, why would Ubisoft admit you can finish the fucking game in ten minutes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I really wanted to play No Man's Sky, but that turned out to be a bag of shit. I'm glad I couldn't get it at the time. Uh, Tony. Well, going back to No Man's Sky, they've been they did like four big patches over a year. And if you compare that to Mass Effect Andromeda, who know they fucked up the game. Yeah, but uh, to be fair, they just didn't their... they just gave up after the first patch. Yeah, well, didn't their so didn't their whole studio get shut down though? Yeah, because of how yeah. shit. They did. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they're not going to be able to patch it either if they've got nobody there sat at the desk. But to be fair, it's part of EA. It's yeah. not like well, yeah, there's about just seven three guys in there. Yeah, yeah. But No Man's Sky is like an independent. They did it themselves, and they've not done any other game really. Mm. Where EA is fucking massive and they've just pulled the plug on it. Yeah. Uh, Tony Axe has a non fan seem to be series that lived on its rep for progressively worse after release. Do you know what, Magic? The first three of those Tony Axe games will probably go down. It, it was a completely different. Oh, God, this is going to make me sound so old. It was a completely <laughs> different time back then when them games came out. Like, F- FIFA wasn't a massive thing. It was all Pez back then. It was then. all Pez, obviously, as, yeah. as most of the people in this chat will know because they are Pez fans. Um,. But the, the, the skateboarding games and snowboard, like SSX, you don't see an SSX knocking about these days. They were just like such abnormalities of games coming out that people could play. They just if they brought one out, it's it shown that this one. I think the route, I think the road, the luck with the fifth one because the Activision license was running out, so they just had to throw a game out. Which I don't know how they managed to build the amount of hype that they did. I was in the hype. I was well up for the hype. Um, but they rid the look with it and it backfired massively. But the first three games were masterpieces. Uh, if you own Far Cry 1 and 4, then you already own 5, Kappa Face. Uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous that the only thing... But yeah, that's my concern about it as well. Yeah. It's ridiculous the only thing that got me hmm, is the level creator, which looks mad good. On Far so Cry. You've, got, you've got Far Cry coming out, and then you've got God of War. Mm. That's not far after it. And then... Shortly after that, you got Detroit becoming human as well. That looks amazing. Yeah. That looks really good. Uh, apparently, it's all so, changed. No more finding radio towers. Everything is open to explore from the get-go. Probably, you can finish it in 10 minutes. Someone said you could do the same with Zelda as well. Mate, I've been playing that game now for about 36 hours, and I'm still nowhere near completing that game, and it's partly because every time I pick up a weapon, it fucking dies in about three bat <laughs> in about three bats. I, I fucking hate that in games. <laughs> it's so annoying. Yeah. Uh, Far Cry and Assassin's Creed are both Ubisoft as well. There's two games left for the interest of God of War and Yakuza Six. I've never played a Yakuza game. 
Have you? No, I haven't. No, there's loads of hype and they're high rated, but whenever I watch a video on it, I think it's a bit fucking childish, that. Yeah, it? it just looks like a really shit sleeping dogs. Yeah. It's not not for me that. Uh, there's a lot of. It sounds like a bag of shite going on. Uh, April twentieth, smoke weed every day. Uh, uh, I'm so good about Massive Fest and drama. I waited years for that game. I think half the people in this chat. That's all it went on about. Uh, remember Cool Borders? Yes, I do. What a game that was. That sounds so fucking familiar. That I'm gonna have to Google that now. Cool Borders. What a game. Uh, I did release a patch on a consistent basis and nearly a year while the damage was done, at least it tried, but I've got to admit the game is this even though I bought it on PC, PS4, yes. Yeah, I do remember Cool Borders. <laughs> what a game that was. <laughs> oh, they had to do it spelling twice because the first one came up with a load of actual borders. <laughs> 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 I missed the A. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like you came up with like, Cool Runnings or something. You uh, misspelled it. <laughs> uh, right, so moving on to uh, right, so that was uh, in fact that was the fastest time that I've ever got through the news. I think most of the time was spent in the chat as well. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember much talk about the macro generation. <laughs> <laughs> so there was the first three news stories. Now this next one is uh, basically to rectify what I said last week, and it's not because I was wrong; it's because something's happened since then. So last week we talked with uh, the contextual podcast about the first three Tomb Raiders. Uh, being remastered and being put on Steam. Apparently, that is no more. Source comes from uh, UK IGM, which, according to Game Informer, Real Tech VR announced that the cancellation in a post on Twitter, which has since been deleted, the studio, the studio later posted <clears throat> the following statement: After this episode, we are refocusing on new projects involving augmented reality and iOS and VR and on PC. Uh, we are not committed to any third-party licenses anymore. So. Everything that I said last week is now redundant. <laughs> Tomb Raider's not happening. Uh, to be fair, though, they, they brought out a Tomb Raider anniversary. Oh, was it for the PS2? It could have even been for the PS3, which is basically just the first version with um, better better controls because the controls of the first Tomb Raider were shit. Did you ever play it? The original Tomb yeah. Raider? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. After the time, you just ended up doing a swan dive into a concrete floor. <laughs> well, it's not just that. When you wanted to turn right or left, she wouldn't yeah. turn right or left. She'd sidestep 45 degrees every time. So you couldn't just turn behind you because you have to go around in an 180 of stepping four times. It was a pain in the ass. Well, apparently, I, n I never played the anniversary edition, but apparently they rectified it. So if you do want to play it, I'd probably get that one. Um, I'll download it on a torrent. Because um, I'm fairly certain you could probably still find it. Uh, really enjoying A Way Out. Now... I know Ed was streaming this yesterday and I was in his chat for 15 minutes listening to... He wasn't even in his chair. He had his camera on. I was seeing was his chair and then someone talking through a tutorial on how to stream using audio. I've no idea why, but uh, I went down and got some food because that's what I do. Uh, doo -doo -doo, what else is going on? Tony House Post 3 was the GOAT, uh, obviously. Uh, I'm unsure. I like Bioware, single play stories and characters, but we'll still some great dev works throughout it. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think uh, uh, worst controls was Batman and Robin and PS One. Never played it. Uh, did you ever play it? No, no. Oh All right, so I'd imagine it was based off the film, which was fucking shy. No, no it wasn't. That was the was that the George Clooney yes. one, wasn't it? it, it, it George it, Clooney. It was the worst. It was the it, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, uh, it was. It was. It wasn't horrific. I mean, I, I will always stand by the nineties Batman films, anyways, because <laughs> there was all of them was just. For me, that, no, the, that's, that's the first two, ones, the Tim Burton ones, they're the good ones, and then they just went to shit. But, uh, I just love uh, Michael Keaton needed to be Batman more. That is that is my standpoint on it. I love Michael Keaton, and it pissed me off the fact that he went and did a Marvel film. However, I, from the room, from the stories that I heard, apparently he was running around the set, still shouting "I am Batman," so that made me happy. Yeah, I saw that as well. <laughs> Say so when he was fighting the uh, Spider Man, he just kept saying "I'm Batman." <laughs> Legend. <laughs> but no, I heard. Oh, well, where did he hear it? It might have even been on one of the kind of funny podcasts. Uh, someone came up with the story about uh, there was is it Batman Beyond that's going on at the moment? So Bruce Wayne is an old man, or he's like in his fifties or whatever, uh, and he goes to the orphanage and he gets a new Batman, shall we say? He takes a kid from the orphanage and trains him to be the new Batman. But there was so like the, uh, the the animated series. Though. Yes, yes. 
Um, and obviously they did the comics on whatever else. But I think it was quite, I'm sure it was Batman Beyond he ended up taking him and he got a new Bruce, shall we say, um, and trained him to be the new Batman. However, if they was to make a film, that old Batman should be Michael Keaton and he should take the kid from Gotham to be the new Bruce Wayne. Do you know what I mean? How yeah. awesome would that be? That would be the- is that what the, is that the film they're doing now? Then no, no, that was that's oh. that's um, that was in the comic book series, um, but the, I'm I'm sure they've done that in the animated ones as well. Yeah, there was. Yeah, that's, that'd be awesome if they did that. That that kid, I have you have you watched any of the new season of Gotham yet? Uh, no, oh, uh, I, I, I think I'm halfway season. through season three or four. I can't remember. Yeah, I think that no, he must be three because four's on now. Um, but we've got me and Samantha have got four episodes to binge watch. Because I'm waiting for him to build up because I get pissed off waiting. Like I've got four episodes of Walking <laughs> Dead, but that's shit anyway. So. Yeah, that was pretty shit. Uh, Telltale Batman is awesome. Uh, last episode of season two is out next week. Kerry, I still haven't played it. I've got it downloaded. I need I need time. And I haven't Have got you seen time. Uh, the new Batman that's been advertised? That should be out shortly. Which one's that? Where is, um, where is a ninja? <laughs> no. He goes back in time with the Joker to like feudal Japan. No, I have not. Yeah, there, there was one that came out a couple of months ago where he was hunting Jack the Ripper in London. That was on Netflix, wasn't it? I, I don't think it's on Netflix, it's on Showbox. Right, there was one that he did with Harley Quinn as well, I'm sure that came out around Christmas. And then there's the um, the one that's coming out with him and the Joker being in the ninjas and samurais and shit. I watched one not long ago. I think it was the Killing Joker... Oh yeah, I've seen that one. That was really good. I that was, that one. Yeah, people didn't like it. I thought it was good. Yeah, it was based off the graphic novel, wasn't mm. it? I quite liked it. Uh, I liked it as well. Yeah. What, the channel is the new season of Gotham on. I'm watching it on Showbox because for some reason in the UK we're about 10 months behind the US. So I give up watching it on Channel 5 or whatever it was on um, over here and I started watching yeah, it on Showbox. If you've got internet access, you don't want to watch <laughs> anything else on in the UK because it just gets ruined for you yeah it's like the flash or anything or agents of shield by the time it actually gets shown in the UK yeah because with, with like the Twitter and stuff like that as soon as you log on and you follow those accounts that I've heard in America the night before it's like you have to wait for oh, I can't believe that happened last night in agents of shield and you go what do you mean last night I've gone for six months <laughs> You just spoiled it for me. Yeah, exactly. So, it's, uh, what's Showbox like, mate, and how do I get it? Um, do you know what, mate? Uh, instead of getting my account possibly terminated for giving you <laughs> streaming services, I'll send you a DM after this, mate. If you've got any kind of Android device, uh, then I'll send you a link on how to get it done, but I, uh, I'm not going to promote any kind of dodgy backhand uh, stuff. Uh, Kerry saying, Paul, that's what me and you do at work with the spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I spoil half the shit for you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you'll never guess what happened last night. Um, but yeah, that was the Tomb Raider um, news. Just to rectify what I said last week, it's not coming out, so don't get your panties in a twist about it. So my actual fire information segment is uh, it's, it's kind of time sensitive, and if you're probably listening to this, it's probably already too late. Um, but Steam's latest free games weekend is now available. The reason I've included this is because um, one of the games is a, goes on a little bit longer. But if you're looking for something to play this weekend, here's some good uh, here's some good news. Steam's latest free uh, free weekend has begun, and it features The Elder Scrolls Online and F1 2017. Uh, ESO's free weekend gives you five days to try out the base game. A trial will expire on the 28th of March. In addition, you'll end up wanting to buy the game. It's on sale right now for $20, which is normally 30 uh, You'll get the base game and the Morrowind expansion. It's worth noting, though, that if you think that you want the summer set, it's still cheaper right now to buy the $40 version because it comes with the base game and both expansions. You've played it, I you? did, uh, and I bought it. Again, It was I can't believe I didn't think of this one. Um, I bought it when it first came out because it was me and Lewis that bought it, and we both played yeah. it. Both really enjoyed it. However, when we put the game in, there was a forty gigabyte download on it. <laughs> but because we, were, everyone was trying to get it, because it was like it was a massive thing. This game coming out, so everybody wanted it. Yeah. So everyone did have a lot of hype around it, and then just died pretty much instantly, didn't they? Yeah, it? I mean, I've got a really good internet connection. Like it's, I've got fiber. It's, I'm getting usually around fifty or sixty megs where I am. Right, this game took two days to download because the PSN servers was just having an absolute shit with the amount of people trying to take this game. So I had to go to my DNS settings, change it to the Google ones, rather than my own. Yeah, I've, had, I've had to do that a few times. To try and make it download faster. It's, 
this shit. Um, but yeah, it literally took two days to download it. Um, it, it. Do you know what? It's actually a really good game. If you've got a PC and you haven't played it before, and you're into the Elder Scrolls games, it's 100% worth getting, because apparently they've put like four or five massive, massive patches into this game. That definitely makes it worth our playing. I'm not really looking at it now. It looks very much like Skyrim. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like, mate. Uh, the, the, I'm sure that the Morrowind expansion, that was the latest one, as far as I'm aware. It is saying that the Somerset one is there. In fact, no, Morrowind was the second one. Somerset is the third one. Um, but the Morrowind one, uh, they obviously brought out an Elder Scrolls game years ago with Morrowind, didn't they? So basically just taking all of that world and shoved it into this one. So if they can keep on expanding them out like that, you know like they do with World of Warcraft, where obviously you play yeah. that. The, the thing is, though, if you're going to play an MMO in a fantasy setting, you just play Warcraft. Because mm. it's the best one by far. It, uh, with the biggest, biggest game, with the biggest player base. It is, yeah, but there's, uh, I know what you're saying, but the games are still two ma- it's completely different. Yeah, games. different. Yeah, one of them looks very swing your sword, and the other one's more pick your abilities. Exactly. Yeah, I like the swing your sword. Uh, I'm a big fan of the swing your sword. I but it becomes a massive issue when you've got lag and latency. Oh yeah, of course it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you've got like a point, it, like press one to cast fire or some shit, then it still casts it even though there's latency, mm. so it's not. That's why it's not too bad. I mean, fair enough. If you want to play like a space one or something else, then don't play them. Yes, yeah. but the, do you know if what, you're mate, gonna play the, a fantasy one, you just go for Warcraft. If we if this game comes up on CD keys for the original one, and it's like I've seen it on there before for seven or eight quid, I've not bought it. Me, me, you and Mike need to try and play this game because I reckon. Did you do you like Skyrim? Didn't you? You like yeah, those cool. games. Now, if I can tell... It's drawn out like yeah. a piece of shit, of though. It is, yeah. I mean, it's on everything now. It wouldn't be surprised if that if Skyrim came to mobile. It's getting to the point now where they're, they're finding microwaves to put it on. It's fucking come out for everything. Every single gadget that's come out, Skyrim's worked on it. Um, but, yeah, it's it, 100%. If we could tell Mike that there is going to be an arrow, a bow and arrow in this game, or 100 Arkai, <laughs> he'll be all over it. <laughs> but it's definitely worth playing but yeah that's your for your information segment this week if you didn't already know and you, you did fancy it it's available on stream uh, on steam until tuesday is the 28th wednesday yeah it is it's available till wednesday and you can play it for free the other game is f1 but no who cares about f1 these days uh so that was the last of that segment and it's just shown you my twitter feed uh okay so Next thing, what have you been playing? Are you going first or am I going first? Um, go on, you go first. You go first. Guess first. Yeah, so if I'm playing online and Mike's available, usually jumping on League of Legends because Mike's cheap ass these days and plays free games or FIFA. Uh, and then if I'm on PlayStation, I've been playing Assassin's Creed and Metal Gear Survive. Mm. So I know Metal Gear Survive is probably one of the most hated games of the year. Do you know what, mate? At the, at the, again, this is probably the third or fourth time I've talked about it. I really, lo- I really like this game, and I, I, I it's not a Metal Gear, game. so it's not a Metal Gear Solid game, and it shouldn't have been a, a full game. It should have been DLC at best, mm. but it is good. I've really is. enjoyed yeah. it. I haven't played it this week. I've had other things that I've um, I've got myself a nice little streaming schedule now. So I say when it, when I'm on Pez Universe channel, obviously I only pay Pez. Uh, but when yeah. I go into my own channel, I put down what people want to watch me play or whatever, and I haven't yet to put that into a poll, which I'm guaranteeing nobody's going to click on it anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I when me you and Barry were playing, I really enjoyed playing it. It's a really good game. I it's yeah, it's a lot more in depth than I thought it was going to be. And it's a hell of a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. However, that is more of the challenge. If, it, if it's a survival horror game, you want it to be a survival horror game. You don't want them to uh, play the game for you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the reviews I've seen, they don't go past the first couple of hours. Mm. And that's probably the worst point of the game, where you're level one, so your health and stamina are out very high anyway. But you don't have much food and water anyway. But once you've got a few levels under your belt... Then your health and stamina last a lot longer. Yeah, like half the reviews I saw was someone running for ten seconds and like throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, 
as I said, it's, it is one of them games, several, like Magic just saying, the Metal Gear Survive, yeesh, each to their own. It, it literally is each to their own. It's whatever they want to get out of it. I mean, yeah. everybody, it's no secret that my favourite games are survival horror games, and this is the most survivalist game that I've come up come up and played. I mean, I've played a lot of them. This is easily the... the I, I thought the base building aspect was going to be bigger of it. That was one of the reasons I bought it, because I bought the original Fortnite. And I, I don't like the Battle Royale version. I bought the base building version <laughs> for that reason. Yeah. Which has just been blown out of the water by Battle Royale. Yeah, for, the, for some reason, they've not made the normal player version free yet it's still mm. like 30 quid even though they probably made millions off microtransactions from the battle royale free version yeah well th- yeah i i mean i haven't played um the is it called save the world yeah yeah you got uh save the world and battle royale haven't you yeah um i haven't played that version of only i mean last night i'm doing a stream with the ice cream uploads guys um on Tuesday for Fortnite, so I thought I'm going to have to, at some point, try and get good at this game. So I played it last night, first three games, slaughtered, and I think I died in like, the first 20 people. The second, third game, I killed five people and managed to get into the top four, so it, it, I think that then with those sorts of games, it's just all pure luck anyway, I don't care what anyone says. You can't be good at them games, because whenever you drop, it's completely random. So I, d- I haven't played them enough to know of like these preset mm. Areas and weapons. That... There's always preset. The areas always stay the same, as far as I'm aware. From what I played, they always stay the same. I think the contents differ. Uh, but it's usually they're very similar. Like it's always a house that'll have a gun in it, isn't there? Though there isn't. Not all, no, every house. empty house. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is empty houses. I found that out last night. <laughs> when I jumped into a place and thought, oh, there's some bullets there, no gun. Bullets there, no gun. Oh, there's uh, them potion things that give you a bit of a uh, shield, still no gun. So it, it didn't matter. I had a lot of bullets, but I couldn't do anything. Um, so is there anything else that you want to talk about relating to your games that you've been playing this week? Anything that you found out? Anything else before I move yeah. on to my shit? Yeah, Assassin's Creed. Oh. They, they did the right thing. They realised after the film and after the flops of the games, they were like... Right, we're going to take a little time here and do a proper game. Mm. And I think quite a few game companies should do the same. Yeah. Well, the film like flopped, the, though, didn't the, it? Yeah, the film flopped. But then the the games before that, they started to flop as well because mm. people were just going, oh, they're just reskins. Yeah. But then if you play the new one, it's amazing. It's one of the be- uh, better games I've played. Uh, well, one of the lads has just said, uh, can you ask Mogul, has he used any microtransactions in Assassin's Creed Origins yet? Um, if he has, just they, the, they carry through to the next playthrough? Uh, just the free ones. Yeah, I think the logon bonuses give you a bit of gold. Right. So I've not, I've not put money in it. Right. I have absolutely but no I, idea. It's well up. The same with Metal Gear Survive. I've, they gave you like login bonuses for the currency. Mm. Yeah, no, the VC bonuses, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I have put, I have spent quite a bit of money on microtransactions, though. But I tend to avoid games that I've played to win microtransactions. Sweet. Anything else? Anything else? No. What about your? Was it seven days to die? Yes. Yes. Uh, on Tuesday, I put out a poll asking people what I wanted to play on my own channel, um, and I teamed up with Shogun. I don't know if you're still in the chat, but we played that on PS4, uh, which is. Not the watered down version, but it's the super vanilla version. So all the patch stuff that comes to PC, obviously comes to PC first, and then eventually gets rolled out to the PS4. So after I haven't played the vanilla version of the PC version in a long time um, before playing uh, the PS4 version. So I don't know the exact difference between them, but uh, to be fair, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm still super shit, and Shogun as well carried me today on his stream. <laughs> Uh, on the PC version. Um, it's a big difference in the ratings. Yeah. Like the PC version's got like a 9 out of 10, but the uh, PlayStation version's got a 4. It's just, uh, the thing is with the PlayStation version, like any game that's been adapted from the PC, it's a lot harder to work your way through the menus and stuff like that, and the customization. Yeah. it's just a ball it because you have to press the bottom right-hand side of your um, touchpad to bring up your menu, and then you're constantly pressing R1, 
uh, R2, L1, L2 to be able to go through your top bar and then the bar underneath and stuff like that. It is just an, it does take the piss a little bit, but I mean, it, for a game that's readily available for you to be able to play, it's because it's free. On it, both no, it's not free. It's not free on either of them. But I mean, you don't have to add anything to it. It's the game's just the game. Do you know what I mean? It's, you don't. It's readily available for you to play once you've paid your money, you've downloaded it. It's all there for you. Um, it's not expensive either. It's an indie game. Um, I think when I got it on early access on PC, I'm fairly certain it's about fifteen quid, and I think it's well more than that now on PC. And the same for the PlayStation as well. I think I picked it up for a tenner when it came out. So it's not an expensive game. And again, it is a super survival horror. It takes a lot of crafting. And you need to work out when you need to start building your shelter for the night. Because when it gets to 10 o'clock, you're fucked. All the zombies start running um, until 6 o'clock. It sounds like mine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like that. Yeah, so you need to build your shelter and stuff like that. I mean, we was playing before. and We spent half an hour of the playthrough on stream before uh, Shogun stood on top of the building firing arrows at the zombies that were coming round well I only had a stone axe um, and he had to throw down a club so then I, I got a bit scared ran up the ladders as well when they started busting down the door so it's just one of those it is good it's better with your friends I mean me and Barry played a lot of that on the PS4 when it came out yeah. um, but on, P on PC I probably played on my own because nobody else had it when it came out like four years ago I, to, to me the, the improvement is uh how should I say for the for the four? I think it came out about four years ago because I remember having it on my old PC, and the patches that they've released have been decent enough for me to say it's been worth the money. Yeah, it's not probably it's, it's not, early release though. Yeah, isn't it, it's wrong. still it's still an early release. I think it, I don't even know if it's going to beta yet, and it's like four years old. Biggest con. Yeah. They should be allowed to do it. Really, they shouldn't. Yeah. They shouldn't be allowed to drop it. You have to when you go into when you sign up to release it. You've got there should be something that comes out and says right within in the next six months it has to go yeah. into beta or you get something. Help you get part of your money back or something like that. They can't say well we're going to release it in alpha, leave it there for four years and see see if people like it. If they don't like it, well, we'll just cancel the game altogether. Type of thing. It's it's shit. Well, if, it, if it's available on the PSN store and Steam, what incentive is there to? Put it to beta and full yeah. version. Yeah, I mean, they brought out it. If if you're bringing it out on console, then surely it has to be after. Fair enough. We all know that PC gaming. It's like one of those. That you, I've got a client on my PC called Game Jolt, which is literally just a dumping ground for people who are making indie games to throw all of their games into it, and then they would then give feedback onto the games. So there's one that I've been playing at the moment called. Uh, it's a remake of the Res the first Resident Evil, but in a first person shooter. Um, yeah. So like they've remodeled, they've, they've basically used the Spencer Mansion. Um, it's just, it looks stunning. It looks really, really good. And the bloke is called Lord, Lord DJ, and I speak to him on Twitter because he keeps on putting up new parts of the game, um, and they're testing that he does through them. And he's stuck my face in the game on a, on a, on a wall. <laughs> he's, he's took my avatar off my Twitter profile and stuck it on a wall because I keep on going on about it. Um, oh, well, it is a horror film. It is a horror game, yeah. So I'm gonna stay. Uh, I'd love to be a zombie in a game like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those. Um, it's I prefer it to be if it's in a client like Game Jolt. I know what I'm getting. If I'm paying real money in Steam, I would 100% hope that what I'm paying for is the, the uh, at least near the finishing product, not 20% of the game. Yeah, it's a lot of shit. Uh, well, the chat is filling up with paragraphs, so I'm going to have a quick run through these. Uh, Netflix are making an Assassin's Creed TV show. Uh, I bought Assassin's Creed Unity. I didn't know. I, uh, I know it's a buggy mess on launch, so I barely touched it. It's fully fixed. Worth my time to attempt completion. No idea. Um, do, you, I, I'm guessing you probably didn't play Unity, did you? No, no I, I stopped playing them after uh, the early ones. Shogun's lurking. Uh, I played uh, I played Unity at launch. It was the most broken game I've ever played, uh, but I did finish it. Oh, you're part of the problem. Stop finishing these games. I know you played it, but you're part of the problem. Um, games wise, it's just, uh, that and Syndicate are very average. Just starting with Origins down, it seems much better. Uh, the most broken game I played is FIFA 18 <laughs> Ultimate Team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, see, uh, however much FIFA denies deny that. They've got to have some sort of algorithm to push people to buy and put money yeah, in. Of course you do. I said this years ago, I remember um, I ended up getting a silver player in a pack. This is years ago. This is like FIFA 14, I think it was. I ended up getting a silver player in a pack and I sold him. 
right? I didn't know if it was worth anything, so I just put him on the market, 300 coins, not buy now, but start. And then so he ended up getting bought for like 90 grand. I was like, fucking hell. So I went out and I bought Benzema, I bought Vincent Company, I bought a few other players to try and fill up my team. Um, and then after about, I'd probably say 70 or 80 games, Benzema, Benzema went from a goal machine who scored two in at least every game so not yeah. scoring at all. So I reckon that the, with the, with these cards, the longer you have them, the deteriorate. They won't show you that, but the the abilities of the players start to decrease. So then you end yeah. up having to go into the market and buying a new player. I think the leagues are a load of shit as well. Mm. Like in every FIFA I've ever played online, I've been seasons division one, clubs division one, and ultimate team division one. And FIFA eighteen, I didn't play ultimate team at the start. I left it a couple of months, but still had a really good team at the start because I put 60 quid in. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then I still won, but I definitely wasn't against Division 10 players. Mm. So it's it's the same PSN that I use. So it's it's obviously not going to put me against plebs who have drum 8 0 because then plebs aren't going to want to play again. They're going to go and cry that I've just been beat off FIFA 8 0 and throw the. Throw the controller through the wall. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I, I don't think the division of what you're in is the teams that you're playing against. They don't do that on PES anyway. It goes off your skill rating. Yeah. I remember in FIFA they used to have skill ratings as well, so I don't know if that's still an algorithm that they have in the background they just don't show them you anymore. Uh, but it's the same with clubs as well. Uh, the only time yeah. they ever play against someone uh, worthwhile is in the, the, the cup modes, isn't it? Because obviously you need to yeah. play against someone to get to a yeah. final or whatever. Oh, in the word dictionary, under the word momentum, it should say foot weekend league. No joke. <laughs> yeah, uh, I hate playing certain games at the weekend. Yeah, you can just, just brings, tell it's just brings our beds out. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of Assassin's Creed talk in here. I heard a lot <laughs> of good things about Black Flag, mostly because of the boat stuff. I'm on a boat. Yeah, that was one of the ones that bumped up the sales a bit before they ruined it again. Mm. So I, 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 I probably haven't played one since the first one. I've got it. I've got the second one downloaded. It was on. It was one of them give free games that they give away uh, on the monthly on the Xbox. Yeah. Uh, it's still there. I've never touched it. Never even switched. Well, it. If you play the the older ones, when you're climbing, you, there's like little nooks and things that stick out of the wall to climb. Mm. On this new one, you can pretty much climb anywhere, and it looks like you can climb anywhere. Like Spider-Man. It's not like you. No, you're not Spider Man. Your hand didn't stick into nothing. It, it grips onto anything that's. Standing out is right. That's like to, there's a yeah. particular type of terrain. Yeah. So if you up a wall, there's like there's always something for you to grip right. on, even if you have to jump diagonally. Or if you're going up a mountain, it's not Spider Man. It's the way you've done. It, it's really good. Right. It's, it's where you were saying that you could, yeah, you can just climb any wall. Like, you can't. You can't climb anything. But it's not, it, they've done it as a way to. It, it looks like you are climbing it and not mm. Spider Man. Maybe the walls are made of Velcro. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> you got velcro gloves on yeah. uh, so people asking about Sea of Thieves uh, Ubisoft uh, released great title uh, initial titles they utterly ruined them by uh, ri- rinsing the public with sequels and shitty DLC and coin systems is it Ubisoft didn't they it was a, they ruined the division didn't they is it yeah they have got the division yeah they've also got anything that Tom Clancy does so they've got uh, Ghost Recon uh, that was Wildlands as well, wasn't it? Yeah, they did Rainbow Six as well. Uh, Siege. Did they do Siege? I'm going to have to Google that. I don't think they did, you know. Renowned for massively downgrading all the games. Yes, they did. They did. Yeah. But yeah, six, six of them worked on that. Six devs. Ubisoft Montreal, Shanghai, Toronto, Barcelona. Don't know how to pronounce that one. And Ukraine. Oh, right, so yeah, and then obviously the other one is Pez, but I don't really want to talk about that. Um, <laughs> apart from, I'd like yeah. to promote my Pez streams. Um, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> hashtag Silent Ravers. Uh, is the Division 2 out yet? Uh, no. Uh, I think they've announced it for 2018. Yeah, they have. I think I talked about it two weeks ago. Um, again, me and you played a lot of that when it came out. I went away for a bit, came back, and you like done the Dark Zone. 700, yeah. 700 levels above me so I'm tailing you and Mike and I just get shot in the face once and die so that instantly took uh-huh. me back out of the game 
But again, it was crap on release, but now people are saying it's good. Yeah, well, I'm sure you the do, you know, expansion in the game, um, it was a paid one. It was... <sighs> yeah, they, they did like the three paid... Yeah, they did like three paid DLCs, and then they thought, shit, no one wants to play this game anymore. We'll make everything free. Mm. So now all the expansions are free again. Really? On Division? Yeah. yeah. Oh, mate, we're going to have to get back on that. Yeah. And I'm going to have to get back on it now and all that it's free. That That is the only game that I ever bought a season pass for. Yeah, but you, have I you got your... I fucking regret it. <laughs> <laughs> like, when we, when we all got it, there was, what, five of yeah. us, and we all hammered it straight away. We had, was in the dark zone, dark zone of, yeah. for ages. And then it just, when we started to get to the harder missions with the higher difficulty, it was just like... I've just put 600 bullets into that guy's face and he's laughing at me. He's like, why the fuck am I playing this game? I, it's a bit, it was just one of them games that I actually... The concept of it yeah. was... It, was, it seemed it, like it, a game that I really wanted, everything that I wanted. Borderlands. Yeah. But the reason I always say I like Borderlands more and I don't mind bullet sponges in Borderlands is... They're all like big mutants or mm. monsters or it's unbelievable. creatures. So you can, they're, they're all, it doesn't matter. But when you're saying, oh, that black guy in a hoodie there with no armor and I've just put 600 bullets into his face, mm. <laughs> he's all he's got is a fucking baseball bat. Yeah. And, he's, yeah. and he's just got a baseball bat, yeah. Yeah. And shit. he comes and cracks me once across the face and I'm there with me uh, blood all over the floor, mm. crawling to Mike for a re- revive. <laughs> Yeah, I love that game. Uh, I definitely, yeah, hundred percent. I want to get back into it. If uh, and now we know the ex, I didn't know the expansions were free. Well, I would out of the two I, that are both coming out. I would rather get Borderlands three. Oh, mate! If Borderlands is, is that that's not been announced, surely. Yeah, yeah, it's been announced. When? They're working on it. Yeah, uh, he, he did a tweet a couple of days ago saying I'm not doing much other than Borderlands three or some shit like that. How in a game show and a talk show like this have I not seen this? Or why have you not told me about it? <laughs> Four days ago it was. Borderlands three. You see, I bought I double dipped with this. I bought this on um PS Vita as well. Oh, here we go. Right, okay, I'm just gonna drag this tweet up. Yeah, so how have you been? Not heard from you in ages. Doing well, Gareth. Just busy behind the scenes working on the next Borderlands. How's things with you? Right. Was this from what was this from Reddit? This was on Twitter from Scott Piltic. I think he's one of the developers. Right, okay, so I'm on the, I'm on the Reddit that's been it's been sent to. Uh, blah, blah, blah. 16 hours ago, please be real. Never mind, just realised it's fake. Just realised the Assassin's Creed dude of the white mask with the Dark Souls 2 trait is a release from the antagonist. That rules out the announcement. I think it's a fake. Oh, is it a fake? See, I'm debunking shit. I definitely knew I would have come across this if that was the case because I've we already we were started looking for the news on on Friday. Oh, did you? Well, I just saw the tweet and then uh, that's disappointing. See, you nearly got me really excited then. <laughs> yes. Right. So obviously that's what we've been playing. I've been playing pairs, as you well know. Silent Ravers, um, Bicol, blah blah blah. Gameplay is doing all right. Servers keep on kicking out. Oh, that's something I will bring up. Uh, yesterday, the servers kicked out everybody who was playing pairs for quite well. I don't know if it was for a while, but it was literally the whole of Twitter exploded. <laughs> so that's all I said to follow people who play it, and everyone got kicked out when they was doing competitions. Um, oh, and also, if anybody is in... No, I've, just, I've just clicked on the tweet now, and it is official. I'm li- on Twitter now. Are you lying? I'm on Twitter now. <laughs> Let me just send you the article. Yeah. I always forget how to send fucking messages on Skype. Oh, you're doing it through Skype. Just open my WhatsApp web. Yeah, this new Skype shit. There we go. PlayStation Life. This is your source. But I just no, he's got a link to his Twitter, and then I just clicked on the Twitter article, uh, the Twitter, the tweet. Right, so we're gonna we're gonna de- we're gonna try and debunk this, or be really accurate. Yes, yeah, so scroll down to you see the tweet from Scott Piltick. Right, so and then just click on it, and it opens up Twitter. 
Here we go. The last Borderlands title was a pre-sequel, which was released in 2014. If you want to jump forward a bit, we have the Handsome Collection um, collecting Borderlands 2 and Borderlands, a pre-sequel for the current-gen consoles, and Telltale's Tales from the Borderland in 2015. But it's been three years since the new Borderlands game, and any kind of release whispers yet another game in the series have cropped up again, uh, again today uh, with a simple tweet. A website called Skewed and Reviewed posted an image uh, of a reply on Twitter alleging that someone associated with the game had replied to them with confirmation of the next Borderlands game, presumably Borderlands 3. The article omitted the developer that said the tweet was fairly easy to track down Scott Piltick, the director of communications at 2K. Let's bring that tweet up. Here he is, Scott Piltick, husband, father, gamer, Boston sports fan, director of communications at 2K, currently working on Borderlands franchise. Right. I find it weird how 2K haven't announced anything. They've just got some director of... Ah, uh, he's director of communication, so that <laughs> kind of does it. Doing well, Gareth. Just busy behind the scenes working on the next Borderlands. How's things with you? Hmm. Piltic tweet isn't exactly a leak, though. Borderlands 3 or the next Borderlands, uh, as it's consistently referred to, was uh, confirmed a year ago. Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchfork confirmed that the game was being worked on at last year's GDC when he showed off a tech demo featuring some of the new systems that they are working on a new game, and then again with a new mocap photo. The character included in the tech demo was specifically oculated to avoid spoilers prior to any official announcement. Piltic pointed this out in a follow up tweet. Okay, so. After nearly giving we'll myself probably find out more at E3. Yeah, 100%. So, what, is about just less than three months away? Yeah. Any, any announcement now is going to be... That's worth anything is going to be at um, E3 now. There's not, nothing... There's, that's why I was very surprised. I was, Nintendo do Nintendo Directs all the time, but to announce everything that they announced before... E3, there's got to be something else that's coming out. I mean, they should have waited to announce oh, the, Smash. the last big release thing that mm. I saw. Spider-Man just got a release date. Yes, seeing that. Uh, the gameplay looks amazing. 100% in, all over it. I really Have you, have you played the Nino Cooney series? No, but I've been seeing... I do like JRPGs. Mm. It looks really good. Never played but the I, first I one. I don't like the childish ones. Mm. And to me, it looks very... Cartoony, childish. Is that a little cat person? Yeah, probably not for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but like, like Final Fantasy and other JRPGs, yeah, sign me up. But once you get a bit kiddie, like Kingdom Hearts, that was another one, weren't it? Where people loved it. But come on, it's got fucking goofy in it. I'm not playing that. <laughs> yeah, but that was that is the whole point of the game. Yeah, but it just put me off. Uh, Tales from Borderlands thumbs up. Spider One, Ma uh, Spider Spider Man One on PS One. Name me a better superhero game. I'll wait. Mm. They, they never did that well because there was very few standalone superhero games back then. Mm. It was always <gasps> oh, I've got it. Come out. I've got it. Blade. Blade. Okay. Blade. The game was fucking incredible. Oh god, I'm I'm putting it up. I am putting it up. I never played Blade. Oh god, it was good. Everyone's gonna see what I've been watching here now. Blade PS One. <clears throat> oh god, you no, got him. A, a lot of the other ones were a thingy as well, weren't they? There was always uh, fighting games as well, yeah. rather than Blade One. Oh, you haven't got Twitch open, have you? Oh god. I've got a huge but they were on PS One. Yeah. I did see a shit quote from him the other day from Blade. <laughs> Some motherfuckers always trying to ice skate uphill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a quote from Blade. <laughs> Look at it now. This is a. I don't. Is this a... Blade is not a superhero. Is a vigilante. Mate is a superhero. He's a fucking vampire. He's <laughs> a daywalker. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I mean, not... he's not a vigilante. He's not going after like, oh, that vampire stole a watch, is he? He's going after <laughs> a fucking vampire. <laughs> oh, mate, honest to God, this game was the absolute tits. I think, to be fair, that this game was. What was the first PS One game you played? What was the first PS One game I played? Mm. That's a good. Hmm. I honestly can't remember you though. This oh, looks. I know what it. I know what it is. I know what it is. You're gonna laugh. 
Go on. I'm not telling you. <laughs> is that bad? It's not bad. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. Oh, God. Do I say it? No, in fact, I will do it because it's fucking classic. Um, Gex 3D, Enter the Gecko. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I oh, mean, it was a fucking great game, that. Uh, first PS3, PS1 game was Wipeout. Uh, Keres was Hercules. Uh, Zizu's was Crash. What was yours? I think mine was Aliens. But I say, if, if your first game would have been like Final Fantasy, I'd have just hit the roof. No, that was the first game that I got proper into gaming with. Because it was always... That was like Narnia, though, wasn't it? That's like... Yeah, so when I was a kid, it was... that We had a PlayStation and all the consoles and shit, but it was never really mine. It was always just, it's in the house, it's like my dad's or my cousin who was living with us or something. And then my cousin who had his, his cousin over one day brought Final Fantasy VII with him. And he, he left it there, and I had a go on it. It was like disc three, and I didn't have a fucking clue what he was doing. <laughs> but fucking uh, had a go of it, really liked it, then bought it myself. Mm. So that's the first proper game that I did. I think it's going to be absolutely no coincidence or a shock to anybody that my first game that got me into hardcore storylines was Resident Evil. And I remember playing that at Mike and Phil's. Because I seen Paul playing it, and I was like, this looks sick. And then I'd, I'd managed to get my mum to buy it for me. Luckily, she didn't know what it was. So, uh, Wipeout was good. R Type Delta and Ridge Racer are another couple. Oh, Ridge Racer! I, I played that at the arcade club. Uh, obviously, I played <laughs> it on the Xbox, uh, on the PlayStation when it, it came out. But it, playing it on the the proper steering wheel and stuff like that, it was awesome. I think the f- the, the biggest games that I played for the PlayStation One that I hammered absolutely Metal Gear Solid. One. Oh god. Uh Gran Turismo. Yeah. And Final Fantasy. I think they're probably staples of Yeah, I remember me and my mates just taking turns completing Metal Gear Solid One. Yeah. Like I'd pass out with the controller in my hand. <laughs> and then he'd over. pick it up and take over. <laughs> and end up completing it like four or five times in a night. Uh, Ape Escape. Never played that. Or I'll try, try to do like a an actual 24-hour race on Grand Theft Auto. Uh, Grand Grand Theft Auto. Grand yeah. I remember uh, being at Mike's and Paul used to have a TV behind the couch that was on wheels that he used to wheel. Oh, out shit, room. yeah. <laughs> his little, uh, he used his little jerk-off card away, didn't he? <laughs> he used to wheel it out in the middle yeah. of the room. He just used to sit there and play Gran Turismo. It would be like the same race for like six hours. Like, fuck that. I get bored. But I get bored of doing like three laps on racing games nowadays. Uh, yeah, they fall off massively. Yeah, yeah. Shit. I, to be fair, though, the new Gran Turismo looks good, and it, it makes me want it even more when I see people on my Twitter feed of all each each other on the uh, friends list and they're competing to try and beat their lap times. Was it? I thought it flopped a bit. It, it could. Do you know what, mate? It, the grand scheme of things, it could have done. But when I see like Pez flops, but people still end up playing it in this community and the. They're still posting about it, but when I see other people trying to beat each other's times, like beating it by a millisecond or whatever, it just makes me want to play it. Yeah. Uh, so that's obviously what we've been playing. Um, the main topic of conversation is uh, main topic of discussion. Sorry, is usually done by the guest. Um, I did give him a, f- uh, a fair amount of time to be able to think of one. He came back to me with a few. I think it was kind of vague. Um, so. Yeah, they were- Go on. What, what is it? I'm sure we'll be able to find the bottom of the discussion once you start talking. Yeah, we're going to talk about the dis- like the future of gaming a little bit. All right. So expect. Uh, I think virtual reality is probably the yeah the first big one, and then the next one's probably microtransactions. Okay. So putting this into context, then. So in the next five years, because five years is usually the, the, yeah. the amount of times for a, a console's lifespan. In the next five years, we're going to have the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Two, shall we call it? Um, so that's going to be two premium, premium high spec consoles that are going to probably change the face of. Yeah, I mean, Xbox came out and said they don't want to do another console, didn't they? Well, as it currently stands, theirs is the most powerful 
console yeah. on the market so they are the benchmark as it stands however yeah. i don't know how many games are actually utilizing the power that's within that console because whatever they bring yeah. out on that needs to come out for the playstation 4 the pro and the original xbox yeah i think the pro and the xbox was it scorpion i think they might have delayed the console mm. race a bit but I think there'll always be a console race. I don't Absolutely. think... The, the reason why people buy consoles is they don't want to go through the rigmarole of pulling out a graphics card and upgrading it. Mm. Or putting new RAM in or putting new hard drive in. That, that was my problem with my old want, PC. Yeah, you want to plug in and play. So there's always going to be a need for a console. Mm. A technology is always going to advance to where it can be improved upon. I.e. So, Nintendo uh, Switch. Yeah, so there's always going to be another console. Uh, I'm, I'm glad but I don't think virtual still... reality is the way to go. Yeah. I, I don't, because I, I, there's not enough people. For one, there's, it, it's it's superiorly overpriced of everything. It's like Yeah, that, that's it's the first really... big issue. It's, it's the cost of a console, isn't it? Well, the cost of a console, and then if you want to go into VR, that's another price of a console, which is, I think the PSVR has 300 sheets in it. And you can get a yeah. used Xbox for 150 quid. So if you wanted to buy a brand new one, you got 600 quid there being shelled out for the the ability to play VR games. That's not even taken and, into consideration. Most of the games are pretty shit. Sure. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's yeah. only, as far as I'm aware, i am definitely got this wrong. But the only games at the moment that are game games for this is you've got Skyrim VR, you've got Doom VR, you've got uh, Resident <laughs> Evil 7 VR, uh, VR. Uh, and I think there's one uh, more. And then you've got a load of shitty ones. Yeah, you've where got it's just... five minute games. Yeah. But actual fully blown games, you've got three pre. It wouldn't be surprised if a, fa- uh, a Fallout one came out because I think that'd be quite good. But as it stands, well, I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of people play VR and they've been sick playing yeah. it because your brain can't comprehend you moving when you're not moving, so you just motion sickness. Yeah. Batman VR, away. you see, Batman came out, but that's not a proper proper yeah, that, game. Yeah, without VR experience. proper shit, it was just no, like no, it's, to be fair, it 20 looks minutes really, or really good. It, it looked concept, good, but it was... But as a 20 minute game, you're not going to want to shell out 19 quid for that, are you? Because I think that was the price point for it. Yeah, it needs proper controllers as well. I mean, PlayStation's got a fucking wand, on not it? Uh... The two stick things. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. It should be a bit more advanced than two fucking ones. Well, the, 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 that's the difference between that and the HTC Vive for the PC and the Oculus. Because yeah. did you play the Vive at Arcade Club? No, I didn't know, Mike. Yeah, me and Mike both played it, and it, yeah. honest to God, the game, whatever game it was that we were playing, it was unreal, and that felt like it was a proper game. Now, I think there is. Well, the Oculus Rift, that's more like four hundred quid. Yeah. And then you need more like a thousand pound PC to play that, yeah. Rather than the the console, mm. yeah. That's it. It's, it's just a very very expensive upgrade for perhaps the amount of games that are out for it now. It's like the the, the Switch when it came out. I keep on talking about Switch. Fucking hell, I might as well call it. We've got to be in your Switch show. Um, the the games that have come out for it, the actual Nintendo IPs that are around. I don't think for a hardcore base is kind of good enough. We're getting a lot of ports that are coming over, but people want more Zeldas, they want more Marios and things like that. And obviously now they're bringing Nintendo over Smash. would make so much more money if they just became developers. Mm. Uh, this is probably their fastest selling... Well, I think it is officially their fastest selling console of the last 20 years. So the only thing that but is... But it's their fastest selling console because of their exclusives. Ex- yeah. Would they make well the 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 profits are theirs though, aren't they? Then if they was to make it for every other console, they'd still have to give a slice out, wouldn't they? They'd have to give a slice to Sony. Well, they'd probably make a hell of a lot more if they did PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, Mario, Zelda, and Smash Brothers mm. rather than just the Switch. Mm. And if I see another one of them Switch shitty adverts. It feels like the most Down syndrome family you've ever seen playing games with each other. I'm probably going to throw my TV through the wall. Yeah, I mean, I love my Switch. Um, I play it quite a lot downstairs if she's watching TV and I don't want to go upstairs and turn my PC on or whatever. I really enjoy playing my Switch, but that's because of the games that I've on it. Now, I'm not prejudiced when it comes down to games with graphics. As long as it's got a good storyline and I'm fully in it, then. 
Uh, so yeah. I'm playing a golf story. It's the most I I basic think the 3D thing of, uh... pixelated game that you've ever seen. It's not even 3D. It's just a pixel game, and I'm proper into it. And it's like 12 yeah. quid. But again, I've got things like Zelda there. But I'd love to play Mario Kart as well. I mean, when we went to arcade club, and we spent like yeah. an hour playing Mario Kart with the four of us. Some random bloke just joined in with us. Um, yeah. I, th- I think the thing with graphics is, I don't mind graphics if I've got the nostalgia of the game. Like, I'll go play Final Fantasy 7 mm. or 8 or 10 happily because I've got the nostalgia there. Mm. But if I was going to play an original PlayStation 1 game that I've never played, I'd probably think this is part of the shit. You see, I'm of a, a completely opposite with that because there is so many games on the PlayStation and the Xbox. And in fact, you could go back to the console 17 years, 20 years, 25 years ago that I was a kid growing up and I would not have been able to ever be able to buy them games, but they looked awesome. And now because I've got the ability to be able to make my own money and go out and buy my own games, there's games that I've gone back to. Some of them haven't held up well at all and they do play like absolute shit. But there is some that I've that I've picked up and they're just like, actually, this is all right. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's definitely playable. So there is the market, which is why I hope the virtual... Co- like, I never had a GameCube, but I had friends who had a GameCube. So there's uh, a Pokemon game that I've never played. And if you used to go and buy the game now secondhand, it's like £150. And I can't remember the name of it. Um, it's going to wind me up. But it, um, it's basically like a 3D Pokemon game. Um, away from like red, like uh, it was Izu saying there, say make Pokemon blue and red with mint graphics on the Switch and I'll buy one. I mean, even if they just brought that out for the Switch, I'd still probably pick it up. Um, I think Kerry said the same at work. Yeah, it's it's just one of them games. In fact, I'm gonna find the name of that fucking Pokemon game. No, it, it, it wasn't Colosseum. It was. Uh, it had a really weird name, Pokemon. There was a game called Pepsi Man. Jesus. Yes. Oh Jesus. There was a Seven Up Man as well. That was awful. Uh, Pokemon. Gale of Darkness, it was called. And it's a game that I, I even downloaded the Dolphin emulator on my PC. So that I could try play it, but it, that runs like a bag of shit. Uh, but Gale of Darkness is like a proper full blown. It was, I think it was a second generation Pokemon. Oh, it might have even been third at this point. Um, so I didn't really know any of the Pokemon I was watching playthroughs, but it's like a proper. Not an open world one because it's still a, quite a linear story. It's like you need to go to this place, blah blah blah. Um, but it's uh, it's an, a it looks like a really good game. Now if they brought that out on the virtual console for the Switch and I can pick it up and play it, even if the price point is twenty pound, I'm still going to buy it because it's a game that I really wanted. Um, but I d- there's definitely room for those kind of games to come onto these consoles for us to re- to be replayed at, the, at a moment's notice. Hundred percent. No, not for me. <laughs> it's each their own. Yeah, it's each, I mean, you just finished playing Final Fantasy VII again after buying it again yeah. for your PS4, but that's because yeah. you love the game. Yeah, and I've got. Well, the thing is, I tried to play it, and the last two, I bought a Final Fantasy VII and nine, and I think they kind of know that people that the game's a lot slower those days. Mm. So what they've both done for both of them is there's a button where you can increase the speed yeah. of the game. And I don't think I could have replayed it without that. Yeah. Because it's the the way the battle system loads up or the battle system ends or you're running through... Oh, it was Final Fantasy. you got a lot of grinding to do to level up. Without that speed increase, it becomes very tedious and I don't think I would have played it as much. Well, Magic's just... Whereas posted... back in the... Go on, sorry. Yeah. No, go on. Uh, Magic's just posted in the chat. He said, the amount of intra- uh, internet points and love by a wearward game for a proper... Visual update of a modern console, Knights of the Old Republic one and two would be insane. You played that, played that. Yeah, game. I fucking love Knights of the Old Republic. Played one and two, and I played the uh, MMO as well. And it, I agree, if they did remade it, or even just modded it with decent-ish graphics, mm-hmm. it would sell massively. I, know, I never played it. What's going on, Razor? What's going on, mate? You all right? Uh, I'd never played it. Um, I've heard you talk about it quite a lot, which is obviously why I, I just thought I'd bring it up there for you. But it's not... one of the one of the biggest twists in gaming of the first one. Mm. I never. I'm I'm gonna have to look at it. It's... If I was gonna play anything now, it'd probably be the MMO version of it. Is it even still knocking about the MMO version of it? Uh, this talks about it being closed down. Actually, really, yeah, it must yeah. be. How was it? Must ten years old? Uh, I don't know. They there was another one who just didn't know the. 
MMR market. The I mean, leveling up is probably one of the best online experiences I've ever had. Like leveling my character mm. and get. But the reason people play MMOs is for the grinding aspect, for the end game grinding gear aspect. Yeah. And they, they just didn't have any at the time. Right. So everyone just spent all the time getting to max level and go, right, what do I do now? Uh, and then they just quit. Because <laughs> they, they want to grind the gear and do the bosses, mm. which you didn't have. That's interesting. Um, in fact, I'm going to have a look at it on Steam. Well, uh, I'll have a look. Yeah, I've got the first one on Steam still. Oh. Is it, so they are, still, they are still live for you to be able to buy? Yeah, yeah, you can buy him on Steam. I'm just having a look now. Uh, Knights of the... What is it? Old Republic. Yeah, yeah. Republic. So it's set like a couple of thousand years before the films. Oh, right, so the, the price point of them isn't overly... And it's got very positive reviews as well, so it's, it's still £7. Yeah. Um, oh, you can buy... Jesus Christ. Buy the Star Wars Complete Collection. I, I can't bring this up on the screen. Um, yeah, that's like 10, 15 games. Yeah, that how, how much do you reckon just, it is? It's probably like 80 quid or some shit. <laughs> Way out there, brother. Uh, 24 games there is. Yeah, it's just anything with a Star Wars. Oh, name. £153. Pound. Fucking hell. I know. There's not been that many good Star Wars games, to be fair. EA have ruined the last few anyway. To be fair, it still looks, de- it still looks half decent. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's more about the story as well than the. In fact, I may, now I've seen the cover, I may have this downstairs on my <laughs> Xbox as one of the free games. I'm fairly certain now I've seen the, the cover art. I've got it downstairs. Need to play it if you have. I might have a look at that then. Yes. It looks very, very familiar. 2003. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I can't remember the last time I played an after decent Star Wars game. There are, they are, it was the mid-2000s, I think, when I picked one up. But it's been a long time. Uh, anyone play uh, 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 Razor just had a massive poo feel amazing right now nice one oh my god he's, he's cheered 50 I don't know what that means but thank you very much uh, uh, top cheer by Razor what a guy and the host as well Jesus I really need to pay attention with these uh, with the chat <laughs> thank you very much brother uh, honestly I'd buy it second hand uh, on Xbox for Knights 1 as I said if I've got it I'm, just, I'm now I've seen the box cover art I'm fairly certain I've got it on my Xbox downstairs Online multiplayer was fantastic, Julian on that. Uh, do, do controllers work with PC or on Jedi Academy? I have absolutely no idea. Jedi Academy was another... That was probably the best lightsaber game. I have no idea. But most p- controllers work on PCs anyway. I think the Xbox controllers you can just plug in and use because they're all Microsoft. and The PlayStation ones, it's pretty easy programs to just plug in and play. Yeah. I think more, the more, yeah. I mean, well, I've got. An, I use my Xbox um, 360 controller on my PC. I just plug it in and we're ready to go. Um, the Lego- yeah, I use my PlayStation one, and there's just there's a load of easy programs to just yeah map it out. DualShock Four for PS4 uh, for PC. That I think that's the one that I use when I do it yeah, because you can do remote play on your PlayStation, can't you? So I used to do that on my mm-hmm. laptop downstairs. Uh, the Lego Star Wars games are good. Um, I. Love the Lego games, absolutely love them. So, so again, it's the the kid aspects that throws me off it. Mate, the, the, have you seen the Le- the Lego Batman film? No, oh, but uh, I, I, I see the uh, the other one, the Lego movie. Mate, the Lego Batman film. If you're not doing anything tonight, please watch it. You will laugh your head off. The amount of famous people that are in that film, where the voice acting is just on point. Me and Samantha have done all the games, the Lego Batman games. <laughs> like we, I've, got, I've got two pads we just smash them out it's so funny like proper class I did like the trailer but and I was tempted to watch it I would have watched the film but the game the funny uh, I think it'd be, uh, the little Batman 3 Beyond Gotham I think it was called that was awesome um, yeah if you don't is it, is it what's he called is it Will, Will Arnett? Arnett? Yeah, yeah yeah he does the voices in him yeah but he does, a, he he, does the one I know he's funny in um, what's it called Parks the skate one he's in Parks and Rec no, the, oh, Blades the, of Glory. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. fucking hilarious, that film. I love that film. Uh, the fucking chase scene at the end. Uh, 
Do I like the Do you like the Dark Souls games? No, because I'm super shit at them. Uh, raise it. It's about a penny, I think. Get yourself a packet of Space Raiders on me. <laughs> nice one, mate. I <laughs> uh, love that shit. I don't. I never played Dark Souls as well. PlayStation Three was probably the my least expensive gaming. It was just PC gaming and FIFA. Mm. And GTA, so which eventually it. broke your console. Yeah, GTA did break my console. <laughs> and then uh, didn't really play much other than them. Uh, I think that's when I was playing MMOs mostly. Mm. Deliberately bad uh, design and systems to Atifala. Uh, my fucking pronunciations of these shit is so bad. I don't know how to pronounce that. Make a make a game hard does not make a great title. And so we can talk about Dark Souls. I again, I didn't buy it. It was one of the downloadable ones. To be fair, the Xbox, the free game, the free Xbox Live Game Pass or whatever it is that they give you each month, so much better than the PlayStation ones. The amount of decent games that I've managed to download off that compared to the PlayStation. It's at least one to four. I've downloaded a lot off the PlayStation. I can't say I've ever played them. Yeah. <laughs> I just add them, add them to my library. Add them to my library these days. Yeah, I add them to my library because eventually I'm going to go back and I'm going to want to play them. Yeah. Uh, artificially, you meant. That's probably why I couldn't pronounce it. Uh, games for gold are the free games. That's it. Um, so, is there anything else that you uh, that you want to go over or out? Oh, I want your opinion on the microtransaction thing. I don't like them. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind them if they're cosmetic. Yeah, because that doesn't give you a boost in game. Yeah, that's the reason out. everybody hated the new Star Wars. Yeah, because you could get you could open if you're you not could put a tenor in and potentially get the yeah. best one in the game, and then you you. It's the, it's the that's where mobile gaming is leaked into the main mm. industry. Well, yeah, because I think because there is it. the. The gay, the whales on there that just go in and throw twenty grand at a game. Mm. Either I don't know how they do it. Whether it's like you always see them stories of kids putting like their parents' life savings into games and they don't <laughs> yeah. know about it. Yeah, no, it's for, for me. Microtransactions shouldn't be like you say anywhere near the game unless it's cosmetic and it doesn't yeah. affect the gameplay. People can spend. There's there's people in the PES community that I know that have dropped three ton. On potential player roulettes and spins yeah. and stuff like that, it's a ridiculous amount of money. And the same goes for the, the the ultimate team stuff. It's the easiest way for a company to make money: add microtransactions to, into a game hey, to I, incentivize I it. I don't disagree with the FIFA ones because I don't see that as a. It is gambling. It's a gamble. Yeah, it's gambling, but I don't see it as oh, it's going to guarantee me a win. It's not. It do, It doesn't. Yeah. The, 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 to be fair, this year I think the mo, most of the Pez, Pez community have turned around and said the legends are good. We like the legends. However, they're not as good as a lot of the uh, silver and gold bar players. Like a lot of the silver and gold bar players now have better dribbling than some of the legends that are in the game. Um, but there's, there's a legend at the moment, Dickel. And he's just absolutely bossing it up front. Like, he's just fucking tearing people apart. The amount of goals that he can score. I've seen someone score a goal with Nedved because he was this week's legend with Del Piero. And uh, Nedved's just scoring bangers and bangers. But he's still going to be slow as shit. Do you know what I mean? If you have someone in midfield that's going to overrun him, he's not going to get anywhere close to you. Uh, hands up if you spent money on Pokemon Go. I'm firmly keeping my hands down. Yeah, I've, I've put money in one mobile game, and that was Star Wars. Yeah. And that but you, was you're still playing 20, that game now, aren't you? Yeah, I've been playing that for like uh, sixteen months or something. Mm. I'm guilty. Of I'm guilty of dropping hundreds on Pez and FIFA. You see, I've, I've even... over the years, I've probably put a lot in FIFA and League of Legends, but League of Legends is all cosmetic. That's uh, just for... I think this year I don't think I've put any money in. I remember I told you years ago on FIFA that I ended up buying one of them coin trader stuff for 100k. Because <laughs> I wanted a load of shit. I just wanted to see if it worked and it did. And that was like six quid. But I haven't put any money in FIFA uh, for Pez or FIFA. I don't. I don't. I, in fact, I don't even think I've played Ultimate Team this year. I've not played it much, and I'm probably not going to buy. FIFA next year, this year. No, nah, I'm not going to buy it this year. I probably play clubs for like it when it first comes out for like the first month, and then everyone goes into yeah, hibernation. We, we hammered it. Yeah, we hammered it. Get a couple of hundred games under our belt, and then think, actually, this is just the same as last FIFA. Yeah. It's still shit. 
So I don't think I'll be picking. I say this all every year though, and then yeah, I say every year, but unless there's big improvements to that game. Yeah, remember we used to take the day off work. We used to take like yeah. take the day off work, midnight release, go home, fucking bash out loads of games, get to bed about five o'clock, wake up yeah. four hours later, and then play it for the rest of the day. Like, that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, Kerry's saying that you've been playing that game since before the Force Awakens came out. Which game? FIFA. No. Oh yes, the Star Wars. Yeah, I did. Uh, Magic saying, I just have an issue with the camera, enemy placements, the respawn of enemies, the gra- uh, the grid, the graphics, the UI. I appreciate that. Jesus Christ, that is basically everything in the game. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that for that. some 18 to 30 range type players that they enjoy the challenge, but I grew up with Jet Set Willy. <laughs> uh, Ma- oh, he's been um, uh, Dark Souls. Yeah, uh, Manic Miner and almost every other title back in the 80s were hard as nails. Yeah, they was just like coin busters though, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, when we went to the arcade place and you, and you use the old arcade machines, mm. it's just fucking, oh, I'm alive for 10 seconds, it's a record. Me, you and me, <laughs> you're like playing Gauntlet for yeah. I don't know how long, and we just couldn't die. It's like, right, first to die. And the amount of health that you had, because you could just keep on pressing the uh, the coin in button, can't you? Uh, yeah. Kit Kat, what's going on, mate? You're doing all right. And you just keep on pressing the coin in button, you just keep on getting more credits. So it's like one of them, you can complete every game that you're playing if you want to. Uh, yeah. Cuphead is meant to be really hard and people complained about it yeah of course they will the people are trained these days to be able to complete a game without even blinking their eyelids or... yeah or if it gets a bit hard they just go hide in a corner and wait for the blood to fall off the face yeah it's uh, it's, uh or the health bar fully regens mm. there's no, there's it's no not like old game. school Resident Evil or Final Fantasy where you die and you thought I've just fucking lost two hours work. Yeah, because you can't say because you have to go back and you have to save it at certain yeah. points. There's no checkpoints. There's no. Yeah. That's what pissed me off when they started bringing four or five out and stuff like that, and six where you just walked to a certain point and then it'll auto save for you. It's like no, send me yeah. back there with no fucking guns. Let me do it yeah. my own way. Oh, the game auto saves and then just gives you loads of health and ammo. Yeah, it's shit. Uh, I know what's happening here. <laughs> Gauntlet, damn, that was awesome. The original four-player arcade experience. It was good. I tell you what, though, it's packed. It's tightly packed in there and it's so like four people trying to get round a little um console it's it's quite a, well a cabinet sorry not a console um it's quite difficult uh battle toads was mental i've never played that uh i'd love that if it was out for ps4 it looks amazing uh yeah that's about cuphead yeah i haven't played it, it, it i've heard it's meant to be rock hard but it's one of them things um is there anything else that you'd like to no no mate Unless you got anything, I haven't got anything. No, I've uh, I think I've vented now for an hour and a half. <laughs> um, would you like me to plug anything for you? Uh, is there any? Would you like to be known on social media? Uh, well, I'm not too fast. I barely go on fucking Twitter anyway. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. I'll do I think the, the, I think this week's the most I've been on Twitter. <laughs> mate, I love it. Mate, I can't get enough of it. The amount of argument that goes on there, the drama is fucking king. Yeah, but with my opinions. I probably get sacked in a week. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point to be fair. <laughs> yeah. uh, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop your Twitter um, tag into the chat. So if you are interested in listening to uh, moguls start talking a lot of bollocks, offending people by every opinion that it has, including about games, pop culture, and anything else in between, then feel free to go over and uh, follow him. Yeah, this was pretty mild. I thought. I thought you know what, mate? Let's not go into a proper route. I'm so, honestly, yeah. I'm super proud of you because I thought, Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to edit this and put bleeps in and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't talked about anything that I would usually talk about. <laughs> I thought, I'd be, I'll think of a thought, I'd be pretty work level ish and not starve. Throwing out a few proper opinions. We'll do a post watershed one that's going to be uncut, and I, I might even make that my Patreon exclusive some point down the line. I don't know, uh, but no, uh, thank you very much for joining us, mate. It's um, I don't think we've ever had a formal conversation like this about about games before. It's been it's been quite yeah. different. It's, it's been yeah. different, but yeah. I think we've had quite a few people, and at one point we had about fifteen people, which is delicious this time of day, considering people are meant to be doing co-op tournaments. I'm just going to end on this as well. Um, obviously, if, if you if you're not if you are in here and you're going to be doing your cup um, pairs in a bit, good luck because you've got four hours to try and get ten wins um, before the countdown expires. So if you are doing that, um, good luck to you. It's going to be a tough night for you. Um, but it has been an absolute pleasure to be able to stream for you tonight. Um, as I said, I've dropped his. I'm going to do it a few more times as well. Just thinking, I'm just going to spam it a little bit. Um, next week's guest is. 
the Midnight Kid is back. Barry's back um, to get his hat trick bar with us. I'm sure there's going to be a lot to talk about, including what's going on in Pez this week and the new agent. So until then, guys, same time next week, 6 p.m. It's been an absolute pleasure to stream for you and speak later.